So, I used to be a coke addict. Every day, I'd take a bag of it, and I would just light that stuff on fire, and I'd go through, go through a whole bag. And I loved it. I never thought I'd change. However, of course I'm talking about solid fuels. Coke and coal. And I changed because I started using gas. And this is about why I now prefer gas, and why that's what I would recommend in 95% of situations. Okay. The debate has gone on forever, and every single time I do a live show, people ask me, coal or gas? Coke or gas? Here's my answer. The role of man seems to be to make himself useless, to create advances in technology so that his work, his labor, his energy is not needed in that particular area, so that he can go on to create more technological advances so less work, less energy, and less labor is expended elsewhere. With this in mind, the reason that I do not like to use solid fuel, and now I have a preference for using gas, propane, is because I want to make the most of what only man can do. Man is now no longer needed to heat steel. There have been technological advances that can outperform man in heating steel. One man cannot heat 20 bars of steel. However, one gas forge can. One man cannot heat a piece of steel in 20 seconds. Technology can. This is the key thing. We are indispensable for so many things. And these are the things that will likely mean we're indispensable forever. I would argue one of the things that will mean that we will always be required is our adaptability and our creativity. So why is adaptability important? Adaptability is important because we are the only machine that can truly adapt to any angle at any moment. And we can do it accurately, and we can do it with force, and we can change the angle and direction of our hammer blows intuitively, in a split second. So of course, why is creativity one of the indispensable things about humans? Creativity is important because we can combine it with the materials of this world, and we can take what is only real in our imagination and make it real and tangible in the world. The ability to conceptualize ideas and then use one's intellect to transform them into reality is very much a uniquely human trait. It is one that should not be discounted or ignored. Tell me, what adaptability or creativity is required to take a piece of steel and heat it up to the point that it becomes malleable? Tell me. Is there any? I would argue that there is none required that technology itself cannot reproduce. So because technology can reproduce heating steel, do it in an efficient manner, and do it just as well as we can apply our human labor, human efforts, to heat the piece of steel in a solid fuel forge, why wouldn't we not use that technology? Just consider, in industry, very few people are running solid fuel fires to create their immense amounts of wealth and fortunes. So why would we, even in the hobbyist blacksmith shop, do anything less than what the professionals are doing every day? I certainly think that another reason that we shouldn't do any less than what the professionals are doing every day is because this technology means that we don't have to expend any effort in working out, learning, figuring, trial and error in using the solid fuel forge. We can simply plug and play. The technology is there, let's make the most of it, and let's focus on where human ingenuity, creativity, and adaptability will likely not ever be surpassed. The anvil. The anvil is one of the key places in the blacksmith shop where we will never be replaced for that creativity, the adaptability, the drive to be able to attempt new things is something that no machine or technology is going to reproduce.
produce, certainly not for a very long time. So let's focus on where the forging counts, where our human potential can best be expended. That is at the anvil. Get a gas forge, focus on where it counts. It's the anvil and you'll have a lot more fun because a gas forge or an induction forge will do exactly the same thing a solid fuel forge can do. Now, I'm not trying to totally preclude the use of solid fuel forges. They're certainly very useful in a lot of circumstances, and I think it's hugely important that you know how to use them. Now, I'm not trying to say that a coke forge has no uses. It certainly does. With a gas forge, or an induction forge, we're limited to the size of the chamber or the size of the coil. This is something that doesn't exist with a coke forge. So it's why I would certainly recommend that once you familiarize yourself with the forging process at the anvil, you get used to working at a coke forge. For now, as you start your blacksmithing hobby, get yourself a gas forge, focus on where you will always count the most. And that, my friends, is at the anvil. Have a lovely day. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, it's Alec. Thank you so much for having a look at this video. I want to let you guys know I do a whole lot more videos pretty regularly too. You can go ahead and check out the last video by clicking right here. You can have a look at my tools right there. And if you want to come learn blacksmithing online and you can't come take a private or group class, go ahead and click right here to go to beginblacksmithing.com. I want to also let you know that you can follow me on social media and see all this stuff behind the scenes. You can go to Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. But guys, I've got to go ahead and get back to work. So I'm going to go ahead and light the forge and uh, I'm going to make some more videos for you guys. See you in a little bit.